Hello everybody, uh, Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Uh, hope everybody's getting their week off to a great start. Uh, we're almost through January, so I hope that you have uh, committed to making this year different than every year before by being deliberate in your decisions, deliberate in your actions, deliberate in your thinking. Uh, I challenge you to make that a commitment this year. Look, you know the routine. Um, there's so much going on. This weekend we had the uh, symposium on epigenetics and that covered a, a, an array of the enigmatic issues that we face in the community from diseases like cancer and lupus to suicidality and uh, the spike in mental illness and suicide, uh, suicidation, suicidality, excuse me, uh, and suicidal ideation uh, on down to economic issues and the bridging of the gap between law enforcement and the inner city community. Uh, it was a major success, uh, but it was also a reminder of the fact that there's so much more work to be done. Uh, we are currently in the midst of a fundraiser. The goal this week is to raise $5,000. You will see a special letter from me to you in the description box that is different than what you would normally see in the description box and we are asking you to support us, but I want you to sort of get an idea of where we at and what we're doing. Uh, this isn't new. Uh, we've been doing this for years and it has been carried predominantly on my back with the support of a few. And I'm asking the community to get on board. If you haven't seen the symposium, it was streamed live and it is on this channel. So look up some uh, epigenetic symposium and you can watch the entire two hour event. Uh, but in the interim, please read the letter and support the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project. Now onto a lighter note. You know, there's having what we call latitude in assessing things, you know, everything from how great a particular athlete is to how awesome a specific musician is to their particular place in history. We often say that Whitney Houston is the voice and it is pretty much universally acknowledged, uh, at least amongst our people. And it's because of this thing. The average person couldn't tell you why she's the voice. The average person who has no inclination towards music couldn't tell you, but they know something was different about Whitney. And we can go on, we can, we can discuss why as gifted as Mariah is and how uh, wide her octave range is, why she's not the voice. And, you know, and so many others, and we can talk about, man, the excellence in vocal range and structure and all of that, right? And we understand that. And then there is, even with a person's right to opinion, there is just certain things we don't do. We don't touch Mike, MJ. Uh, when it comes to musical genius and musical mastery, uh, being a musician, not just an entertainer. We don't mess with Prince. But when it comes to impact, like when you talk about this person and how they hit the world and left a mark, we don't mess with Mike. But Shannon, Uncle Shay Shay Sharp decided to jump out there and jump on the Taylor Swift bandwagon. Now look, I'm not a Taylor Swift fan, but I'm also not one of these people running around losing their mind because they keep showing at the football games. That's called marketing. Um, that's called uh, actually ingenious marketing. 
uh, because they're pulling an entire uh, target market that wouldn't otherwise be watching football into football. The people who love Taylor Swift and follow Taylor Swift and probably don't know jack crap about football are watching it now just to get a glimpse of Taylor and to ignore the significance of her impact in music over the years, whether you like her music or not. Um, her sellout concerts are a testimony to uh, how much she's loved and her fan base. She is... Uh, in many ways the European version of Beyonce. I'm not comparing them in talent. I'm not comparing them in voice or nothing like that. So please don't get me on that. Uh, the last thing I need is the beehive come messing with me. Uh, but if I were going to compare Taylor Swift in impact, B is probably who I would compare her with. Major mass following extremely law who loves everything she freaking does right and yet still we don't say she's on MJ's level Uncle Shay Shay we, we don't do that that's not what we're doing but what happens is like with anything else honestly in fairness to Shannon is out of sight out of mind in the sense of you know dude was bad you remember he was bad you remember all the hype behind thriller and off the wall and dangerous and bad and and and, 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 and all that stuff you remember the soul out tours in europe you remember him literally holding an entire crowd hostage for 15 minutes just standing in one spot you remember that stuff right you remember the fact that this person can't go out in public Literally, people find out what hotel he's at and they camp out and it's like they're there to see the Pope. This is who Michael Jackson was. So when we really don't actually take time to think and we just speak, we can look at this craze that's going on and yeah, and it's pushed by some things. Uh, has she touched some things as far as the, her ability to generate revenue behind her stardom? Absolutely. Uh, the rise, uh, the reach of technology, uh, the reach of social media, the ability to push and market uh, digital product, products in a way that you could not market. Uh, unit unit products previously are going to obviously lend to her ability to generate massive uh, revenue, and, and 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 that's understood. You know, so nobody's challenging that. Nobody's sitting up and arguing that. But we do not sit up and say impact and then say she's in the same category with MJ. And again, this is no attack on her. Uh, again, I'm not a fan of her music. I don't dislike her. You know, I just don't uh, have a taste for her music. And it's not that some of it I don't like. I mean, it's not that there's not anything I, I don't like, but just not going to buy a Taylor Swift album just yet. Uh, not my flow, not my zone, not where I'm at in my life. You know, who knows? Maybe if I was younger, I might. Uh, but obviously she has a fan base and she has a music style and she has a personality and she has a persona and all these different things that make her uh, likable and lovable by many. And that's that's great. Uh, the fact that the NFL is capitalizing on that is, you know, what they do in marketing and the building and the expanding of their brand. If we don't do anything, we should probably take a page out of that book and look at ways that we can expand our own brands, our own personas, our own things that literally carry us, lift us, build us and grow us. That's what we struggle at. We spend so much time being pushed out of place and being agitated by what's going on with that that's theirs they created it we're watching it but they create it they own it and that's the thing that i would like us to see is that it's time for us to start owning some things start it's time for us to start leveraging social media it's time for us to start uh leveraging the capacity to create things digitally 
and grow revenue off of it and then use it to uh, support our own values, interests, and principles instead of asking someone else to do it. Uh, but when it comes down to MJ, I'm not saying that at some point that won't, won't be somebody that does that. Uh, but what I'm saying is at this point, it hasn't happened. And you got to understand the level of stardom and fandom and pure infused if, if there's a word infused chaos that just surrounded this man was done in a time that preceded social media it was just regular TV people you know would just hear he's in a place and just pop up and you know you couldn't have MJ in a uh, suite at a NFL football game and the game continued. You know, you just couldn't have him sitting like that and then fans are going to just be okay watching the football game. That's the impact Mike had. And again, um, that's my take on it. I just... I, I really and we could go into a deep discussion of impact and what what you know what Mike was and who Mike was and you know but just on the surface I think that I'm and again I'm a big Mike fan I'm not a Taylor fan and uh so I'm gonna acknowledge that but here's the thing there are just certain things I think that you don't touch. There are certain covers you don't do. There are just certain things that in music you sit up and say, leave it alone. Talking about MJ in comparison to anybody that's in the music business right now is a no-no. And that's my take on it. And I'm going to stand on it. Um, you know, everybody's got their opinion and I'm pretty sure there's a million plus millions of Taylor Swift fans who will argue and probably all of them weren't even born uh, when Mike was doing what Mike did. So that's the thing, out of sight, out of mind. And we quickly forget. And I get it. You know, the whole hula, 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 Shannon makes you think, man, every time you look up, you're hearing, you're seeing, uh, there's this, you know, constant barrage of her, and yet still not in the same stratosphere with MJ. Um, again, I think the more fair comparison would be Taylor and, and B. Um, and like I said, that may be up for discussion depending on who you ask, but I don't think it's a discussion when you start talking about MJ. That's what I'm going to leave on that note. Uh, also, again, as I said at the beginning, read the letter uh, that I have submitted to you uh, and show your love and support and help us reach this $5,000 goal so that we can continue the work that we started uh, and we can be an impact in the black community on that note i'm going to get out of here uh thank you guys for sharing time with me you guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day